morning. Time to say hello to Mukesh Agarwal now, President Crystal Research. As we promised, we'll ask Crystal what they're anticipating from Q3 earnings, the next big trigger for the markets. Mukesh, good morning. Thanks for taking out the time and being with us on the show. So I was going through the note that you had put out yesterday. It seems overall expecting stability on margins, but top line growth still a little, little elusive. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good morning. Yes, in fact, <clears throat> we have analyzed 28 sectors on which we have looked at numbers of 346 companies. And our analysis shows that we expect the revenue growth to be muted, to be in the range of 11 to 13 percent. On the other hand, the margins are expected to remain firm. In fact, we expect the margins at the EBITDA level, year on year growth, to be around th 10 to 30 basis points. So the increase in margins or marginal improvement in margins will be supported one is by increase in realizations and second in softening of the commodity prices for commodities such as coal, rubber and cotton. Mukesh, um, is this across the board? So you're expecting margins to improve across all sectors or are there going to be some sectors that will continue to actually struggle in this quarter too? No, we don't expect the margins to expand across sectors. I think sectors where we expect the margins to expand, one is sugar, second is cement, then we also expect margins to expand in ports, and then we expect margins to expand in airlines also. So if you look at cement, airlines, and sugar, margins will improve mainly to due to increase in the realizations. On the other hand, sectors like power, textiles, and tire, there the margins are expected to improve because of softening. On the other hand, in sectors like shipping, hotels, we expect the margins to come down, reduce. And that is mainly because of excess capacity and slowdown in demand growth. And on the other hand, sectors like paper and petrochemicals, due to hardening of input prices, we expect the margins to be impacted or to be on the margin growth to be lower. Mukesh, what about IT and pharma? Are you expecting improvement in margins for these two sectors? Because the rupee clearly has weakened quite substantially. No, if you look at IT and pharma, if you look at the first half, H1 of financial year 13, they, were, they significantly benefited because of the rupee depreciation. Now, in the third quarter, in these two sectors, we don't see too much of benefit on account of rupee depreciation because that benefit will wane off. So, if you look at IT, we expect the revenue growth to be around 16 to 18 percent and that will be partly driven by volume growth plus increase in the volume growth plus increase in realizations. But on the margin side for the tier 1 companies, we expect the margins to decline by 100 to 150 basis points. That is mainly because of one is the rupee depreciation benefit will not be much and second will be the increase in their cost will be higher than the increase in the billing rates. On the pharma side, for the larger companies, <clears throat> we expect the revenue growth to be 20 to 22 percent, but the margins we expect them to remain flat as what we have seen year on year. Year on year we don't see any expansion in the margins on the larger pharma companies. Mukesh, um, what's the sense as far as basic top line growth is concerned, which sector do you think will be the best performer and which sector will be a clear disappointment in terms of just basically getting the business back, the top line number in itself? <coughs> Yeah, if you look at the top line sectors where we see, we are saying overall 11 to 13 percent growth. So the sectors which will grow faster than the average growth are sugar, pharma, cement, power generation, IT services and FMCG. So if you look at sugar again because of realizations, pharma because of their export growth, cement again the volume growth is expected to be around 7 to 8 percent but the realizations have really grown by almost 15 to 16 percent. So cement also will grow at 20 percent plus. And power generation, because of revenue growth, is mainly will be driven by the capacity additions. And if you look at IT services, again, there's a volume growth and rupee depreciation. FMCG mainly because of increase in realizations. Mukesh, um, I just want to pick up on the infrastructure in the cap goods space. What are you expecting over there? Because those sectors have been struggling. There is no real price. There is enormous amount of pricing pressure. Offtake of projects has been extremely slow. What is your expectation from this sector? Uh, if you look at the order inflow, if you look at BHEL, the order inflow in quarter two was lower year on year. If you look at the order inflow in quarter two was lower by 72, 74 percent. So that, because of that plus rising competition which has been resulting into low margin order inflows. So we expect the margins to decline by 150 to 200 basis points 
and second is the revenue growth we don't expect much in capital goods we expect the revenue growth to be around 0 to 2 percent types and if you look at on the construction side construction we expect the top line to grow by around 12 to 14 percent but we expect the margins to decline by around half a percent to one percent and that is mainly because of input increase in the input cost for things like cement and steel. Uh, talking about banking per se, what is the outlook here? Are you expecting these asset quality concerns to continue and what's the sense on spreads? See, if you look at on the banking sector, if you look at the first half performance also, there has been clearly a clear-cut difference between the public sector banks and the private sector banks. <clears throat> so, uh, NPAs of the public sector banks have been going up, whereas the NPAs of private sector banks have been under control. And similarly, on the net interest margins, net interest margins of public sector banks have been impacted or slightly lower as compared to earlier year. So, we expect this trend to continue. So, we expect the gross NPAs to increase. In fact, Crystal's forecast is gross NPAs to be around 3.25% by end of the year and so we expect the NPS to increase and margins to be marginally lower for the banking sector also. Mukesh, what about auto? Another sector that has been actually struggling recently. We've seen those monthly auto sales numbers month on month and most seem to disappoint except a handful of the other ones that are doing quite well. How, what's the outlook for the auto pack? See, auto outlook, if you look at, I will classify it into various sectors. If you look at for car and UVs, utility vehicles, our forecast is the yearly demand growth will be around 8 to 10 percent. For two wheelers, so far it has been uh, sluggish, it has around been around 4 to 5 percent, but we expect the sector to end the year with around 7 to 9 percent. Now, if you look at commercial vehicles, commercial vehicles, it's, we have to look at it two separately. One is heavy commercial vehicles and uh, medium, medium and heavy commercial vehicles and light commercial vehicles. So, in MC, medium and heavy commercial vehicles, we expect the negative growth. Basically, we expect the sector to degrow by around 12 to 15 percent. For LCVs, we expect it to grow by around 13 to 15 percent. So, that is our outlook on the demand growth for the various sectors in automobiles. Kesha, very lastly, uh, so if I to ask you, what are the sectors that you are expecting to outperform in this quarter and what are the sectors that would actually lag in terms of earnings? So if you look at outperformance again, cement is one sector which is expected to do well and that will be mainly driven by increase in realization. So volume growth will be 7 to 8 percent, but realizations have really gone up by 15 to 16 percent. So we expect the margin expansion to be there. And on IT, again, as I said, volume growth, reve revenue growth will be there, but we expect the margins to decline. Pharma will be one stable sector. FMCG, again, revenue growth and margins will be mainly driven by increase in realizations and that will also be mainly due to cigarettes. And lagging behind again one is shipping is one wherein we expect the margins to contract significantly because of excess capacity and the bulk rates, bulk dry rates and the rates have been, fleet rates have been coming down. And if you look at hotels also because of excess capacity, the utilization occupancy rates have come down, revenue per available room has come down. So we expect some kind of a decline in the margins for the hotel sector also. Steel sector also, we expect the revenue to grow by around 2 to 4 percent, but we expect some kind of a contraction in margins or in some negative uh, margins to come down by around 150 to 200 basis points. One is because of increase in input cost plus liquidation of high cost inventory because they, the demand growth has been slower in the steel sector because of which they have been building up in high cost inventory. So that will get liquidated which will impact the profitability in the steel sector. Right. Uh, thanks Atan Mukesh for that uh, and for telling us what is the outlook of Crucible and what sectors are expected to do well in the second quarter. We'll take a quick break but uh, when you come